Yeah, so we've got a bunch of fan theories that we're going to run through. Put some up on patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Uh, we put it up on Twitter and, of course, we put it up in the Facebook Great Mates now, group. What, what I like about a fan theory episode is mm. some of them are like sort of well-known, established fan theories. Yeah. And some of them are just people saw the call out and just are saying a random thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Which I really appreciate. Their yeah. own headcanon, they're just like, absolutely. This, this is definitely the case. Just firing it off. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to kick it off or would you like to kick well, look, it off? Look, I've got one of the crazy ones from, this Love is from it. Will Scheel. It says, Batman is actually a spirit or demon like Ghost Rider. It just finds a new billionaire linking all the Batman movies. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. I think that'd be very good. I oh think my. So they're just, they're just no good billionaires. They're just regular no good billionaires. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then Does he kill their parents? I guess it does, right? Because it gets them young. Oh, I was going to. Because they've all lost parents. I see what you're saying there. The way when I saw it initially, this particular one, my real thought was they're just existing billionaires. Mm. So it's like Elon Musk or whatever. Yeah. He's just out there building his batteries and calling yeah. people pedophiles. And then all of a sudden he's just up in one of his penthouses and the Batman spirit goes into his head and all of a sudden he's given the he's given the origin story. Oh, okay. It's like, oh. So he just thinks everybody calls him Bruce Wayne and all that. But yeah, I he's think so. not, yeah, yeah, But yeah. he's really just this. But he's an eccentric billionaire, so people let him get away with it. Yeah, things. right, because they're like, yeah, well, he's, he can do anything. He's not going to jail, is he? But I also like to think that this, this spirit also, like, tortures them yes it, it keeps teaching them that it keeps reminding them they're, they're terrible billionaires <laughs> it's the bat right it's the bat crashing through the, the window crash- that's yeah, got to yeah, be yeah. it right uh-huh. yeah yeah i and love that theory butt. that's so great and we're just going to rapid fire these i <laughs> yeah, guess I some so, yeah. will get caught on but that's uh-huh. fine so marco on the facebook group says there was this theory that doc brown tried to commit suicide with the delorean but it accidentally worked instead because you know everything that guy makes doesn't work. Oh right, well, we okay, see that in sure. the past. But then he's got he's got the dog food machine. It's like some things yeah. do work. It's a dog food machine. And he's like, I tried to kill myself with the dog food machine, but I guess get being fed delicious dog food. <laughs> yum yum yum. There's the theory that also that mind reading device actually works because he kind of makes some vague approximations oh. that might be. Accurate, but it's. I think the idea is that none of his stuff really works. I, but that would mean he attempted to kill his dog. Oh, well, that's <laughs> wow. Well, you can't get away with that in a Hollywood movie, can you? No. You feed it with the dog food machine. Yeah, absolutely. How old is that dog? Like 20 plus? Yeah, maybe. It goes back to 1955 and Black to the Future is set in like the mid 80s. Yes. It's like a 30 year old dog. It's a very old dog. He's doing that right, isn't he? Maybe that's what the dog food machine does. It <laughs> gives you an immortal dog. That's right, yeah. The, the Back to the Future franchise could have gone in a whole different direction if they were like, all right, we're done with time travel. Now it's mind reading helmet. <laughs> now it's like they're different every single. Every single movie, they give it's a different wacky invention that sort of works. They could call it, let's get back to that mind-reading helmet. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the third one's just the dog food machine. <laughs> you know that dog right. food machine? Yes. It's just that. Big business has stolen the dog food machine, and it's going to make everybody's dogs immortal, <laughs> and it's going to ruin the dog breeding industry, so I they've would, got to stop it. I like the idea of a Back to the Future universe where it's the same characters but different inventions. I think that's really no, fun. I think it would be good. We're never getting a sequel until Robert Zemeckis dies. But it's true. When, when that, when that <laughs> happens. Fingers crossed, yeah. I mean, that's as soon as he's out of the picture, we're getting another one, Oh, right? immediately. Yeah. I reckon it's probably ready to go. I reckon maybe yep. contracts have been signed behind his back and I, stuff. I think there's also a good chance that he'll be like, I had a good idea and we're doing one anyway. It, it wouldn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, right, uh-huh. I, I just wouldn't put anything off the table. Mm. Yeah, what else we got? It's a set on the Polar Express. <laughs> You're teaming up those universes. <laughs> wow, your baby vomits really loud. <laughs> uh, Jeremy says, not sure if this counts, but I think the resolution for Mysterio being alive in the next Spider-Man movie will be that he's using a stunt double at the end of Far From Home. If Mysterio did use a stunt double, that would also cancel out Peter murdered him as well. If they're like, prove that he was alive, it'd be, oh, that would true, get yeah. him off the hook. It, it, wouldn't, would, yeah. it wouldn't resolve his like identity being revealed, but it would solve that. Mysterio is definitely coming back in some form, right? Because he's, so. he's a team, like he's not one guy, yeah, you right, know? Uh-huh. So you, oh, I see, even if real Mysterio, yeah. even, if, even if Quentin Beck dies. Yeah, because that him machine with, can make anything. That is true. Yeah. And all the team got away. All the team got I away. Think. Some of the team Unless got Shield away. Unless Shield ran them all up and shot them. Yeah. So they might have done. Yeah, but they were run by bloody Ben Mendo. He didn't know what was up, remember? That's probably true, yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'd hate being Nick Fury. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly it, yeah. Who knows, it really? It is exactly it. You're right, Jack. That's exactly it. That's exactly I'm right. happy to say it. Mm. We also had a few theories that didn't kind of work out in the last one because it was like we had like some endgame theories because we did it before endgame. So uh-huh. we've got to be careful what we talk about because this will come back and bite us in the ass. But we were like, you said that. 
Quentin Beck was actually a robot or whatever we said, but we didn't well, say to that. To be clear, we didn't say it, and also we don't stand by anything we say. Yeah, if not anything. Even, not even one thing. The people listening to this, you stand by what you say. and You're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got them. All right, I'm just going to put this baby, put her in a little crib. Saying this to you earlier, but like a sleeping baby, there was like nothing that looks more comfortable. Oh my god! Absolutely. And people spend just... their entire life trying to recapture that kind <laughs> of peace, just that blank mindset, just chasing the dragon yeah. of a good night's sleep. Yeah, and you can't anymore because your your body's all stretched out and, and warped from being <laughs> old. That's right, and gravity and whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's right. It. You need you just need a memory foam and a, yep. whatever. It does it still doesn't work? You can't. And if you because if you go to sleep thinking about literally anything that's happening in the world, yep, you just wake up screaming. That's <laughs> that's right. That's how everything's going. Yeah. How about this for a theory? I'm ready. It's from Connor. A darker Star Wars theory is that Anakin accidentally, though I wouldn't say accidentally, I would say probably on purpose, uh, using the Force to make Padme love him over the course of Episode 2. Because at the start she's like, this guy's clearly yeah. insane. I knew him when he was a little kid. It was weird. It's weird now. <laughs> so just the idea that... I had to take him to go potty that one time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He shit his pants on the spaceship. Yeah, this... I mean, he still does it now, but I love him for some reason. <laughs> must, be, must be evil Force magic. <laughs> But that makes sense because yeah. why, why would she like him? He's right. insane. And there's a moment where he's like, I murdered everyone. And she's like, I love you. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. That's absolutely not yeah. right. So <laughs> this is going to cut out a number of them, but I thought it's worth mentioning. Uh, yes. Sadok says, the main character was actually in a coma slash dreaming slash imagining all of it. Apply that to any story and you've got a fan theory. So that's like <laughs> that's Joker gets true. in the fridge, the yeah. Breaking Bad that Walter White died in the car, which we know not to be true because there is a sequel, unless that's also part of it, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I was this meth dealer. Perfect. See, That's right. Every single time. Aliens, Ripley, everything after Aliens is Ripley in a space dream. But what if everything before Aliens is also in a space dream? Oh, my God. Right? <laughs> Including AVP? Yep. Oh, great. Uh Indiana Jones is actually a Han Solo fever dream when he's in Carbonite. So it's just let's that's all of yeah, those. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Indiana Jones when he comes out of the fridge, everything after that is because <laughs> he would have been incinerated. He's, he's dying of radiation poisoning. He's just dragging himself through that fake city and just <laughs> just melting. And he's like, oh, but what if I had an adventure with an alien? And I had a son. Mm. And I had a son and a legacy, and I got married. Oh my god! Nah, you're dead, mate. You yeah, died. Yeah. You died. You died. If you died of rads, <laughs> and not a good kind of rads. Yeah, you're right. That's that's. <laughs> There's a lot of that. You could do that for anything, really. You really could. I really enjoy that. What's that movie where it actually happens, though? The Jude Law movie? Uh, uh, Alfie. <laughs> it could be Alfie. You could do it with anything. I don't have cancer in me balls. <laughs> what's the- I don't have cancer in me bollocks. I mean, but what's, what's the movie with him and Forrest Whitaker? And a- I don't know. It's like an action movie. Let me Alfie's look it up. an action movie. No, I mean, action in terms of sexual action. Oh, sure. that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> is it the new Pope? Is it the Isn't he in a coma in the new Pope at the moment? Repo Man. Oh, yeah. Remember that right. one? Vaguely. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I hate a movie that's like, forget everything you knew because none of that. The movie Next, Repo Man. Yeah, yeah. There's a rom-com at the moment. The young Pope where he's in a coma. Netflix. Yeah. Maybe it's all a dream. Maybe the whole thing's been a dream. How about this one? This one's been around quite a long time, and I think Chris Pratt is like, I love this one. Josh says, the kid that Sam Neill talks to at the beginning of Jurassic Park with a raptor claw grows up to be Chris Pratt's character in Jurassic World, and that conversation is why he learned to respect the raptors. Oh, that's right. Is this the kid he's inexplicably quite rude to? At the yeah, well, he hates Jurassic kids. Park. He's yeah. like, I hate kids, and this is how you'd be murdered. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love and also, just ever. FYI, all these dinosaurs would have feathers on them, so while you're being murdered... <laughs> They look ridiculous. You look ridiculous. Yeah, it's a, you exactly. better hope that the press do not get a photograph of you being murdered because it'll be on the <laughs> splashed on the front page, and you will look like an absolute goose. <laughs> what about this one from Colin? This one I really like. The vat the Joker fell into was a chemical attempt at a Lazarus pit, and that's why he keeps coming back and is crazy. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Because he's. After he falls in that, he's. I mean, his mind snaps. Where everybody knows the, yeah, the right. rough origin. Uh huh. But what if it's not just that? Because everybody who comes out of the Lazarus pit is crazy it's for not a bit. Good. Yeah. But unless it's a, a very poorly made one. And so he's crazy they put bleach forever. In it. They put bleach They're like, in it. this isn't anywhere near the top. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> let's just put a let's just put a ton of bleach in Somebody it. Somebody peed in it and they're like, Well, what do we what do we do? What do they what happens when you pee in a pool? Do you <laughs> put puts bleach as a bleach? Okay, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Cool. So I quite like that theory. They put in um they put an aquarium cleaner. <laughs> so the Joker, in addition to being insane and a and a horrendous murderer, he also pees blue all the time. Oh. He can't help himself. He's got a big fishy mouth, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. Mm, yep. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Uh, what about this one? I think it. I think there's a chance that something like this will happen in a future Star Wars movie. It's from Steven on Twitter. Ben Solo gives his life essence to save Rey. The dyad merged onto one person. That's partly why Rey's a Skywalker, because she's both Rey and Ben's essence. That's why we don't see Ben Solo's ghost at the end of the movie. He kind of isn't dead. He resides within Rey. Oh. I think he's such a fan favorite character yes. that when they eventually do sequels to these movies, mm-hmm. and they will, oh, yes. they will bring him back in some form. Also, they've established time travel in the Star Wars universe. That's true. They yeah. can do that. But the idea of you could snatch a body out of any point in time I put the new, his old mind in it from Ray and it's exactly. like Spock the, can put his mind the free, in the free Jack uh, the free Jack averse exactly because Spock right. it's, not, it's not the same universe Mick Jagger Mick Jagger, I mean, Mick Jagger. Emilio Estevez that's right yes yeah um, I know I'm that from jack- you. I'm free jacking this this theory. <laughs> Everything I know from, about free jack is from you. I have no idea what happens in free jack just from <laughs> just from our conversations. Hijacking people's bodies. Yeah, it's in Star Trek. I know it's not the same universe. Or maybe it is because there's theories about that could be the Uh same universe. But, you know, Spock does it. He puts his mind in in bones. I guess if you wanted to do that, you would have to lay the – you wouldn't have to. You'd have to. I think it would be better if they laid the groundwork for a a feasible way of doing that. Yeah. Like at this point you could very easily say, I'm back as a force ghost and, uh, you know, I'm here to give you advice. But you would think that they want to bring him back mind and body. Right. So how okay. do you do that? Do you use the cloning technology? Yeah. Well, that's you... oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's you a, could. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then he comes out like Snoke. And he's like, <laughs> how how do you how do you like this? How do you like this, Ren fanboys? Oh, how do you like, like it. this gross, like this it. awful gross man? What I don't do you like reckon? It. I don't like uh, it. You have to like it though. I like it a little bit. Yeah. I think a lot of Star Wars movies or movies in general are reactionary. So I think it could just be. Yeah. Whatever, right. Uh-huh. Really. Uh, Richard says. All 80s and 90s Arnold characters are clones using his DNA from twins. <laughs> <laughs> so every single yeah, they're, they're all like super soldiers that they just throw out into the field to well, I mean, do that, stuff. You could also, One's a kindergarten teacher. You could also, also. tie in twins and the sixth uh, day. That was my next thing, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. You could be like, oh. I mean, that would also involve time travel because you clone them and send them back. But maybe it's existing technology from the twins of Earth. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, that's kind of, you know. So that means they made the character from Junior where he's a doctor and pregnant. That means yep. Jingle all the way. They're just like, this one's a dad. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Did they clone the kid or did they? <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Did they invent Turbo Man just so he had a, <laughs> a mission in mind? <laughs> I don't know. I would love a... It's all the same universe then. That means that all of these things, like the Predator and Commando and I guess Conan is like an apocalyptic future yeah. or something. Uh-huh. It's all the one universe and I love right. that. Yeah. Or, or they're all the descendant of Conan the Barbarian maybe. Mm. Like we don't like... Who knows how this how this system works? You really don't. Yeah, that yeah. they throw in and all those kinds of things. I would watch a Twins 2 where Danny DeVito has been replaced by Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> from The Sixth Day. So it's two Arnie's. <laughs> <laughs> one's 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 a man on the run, and one's yep. just a man in a big beige suit. Okay, I got some questions about twins before we move on. Yes, they are going to make a sequel. It's called Triplets, and it's going to have Eddie Murphy. That has been written. It has mm. been confirmed that it yep. that it's in the works <laughs> at the very least. But I want a prequel. It's just called One Guy, and it's just Danny <laughs> DeVito, right. and he's just running scams. <laughs> yeah, and he's just he's always just looking around, being like, ah. <laughs> Oh, okay. His catchphrase would be like, who am I talking to here? I'm just one guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you like the show Friends, Mason? I love the show Friends. But do you prefer the show Friends or Seinfeld? Where do you stand on that? Seinfeld. No question. That's right. That's correct. That's the right answer. I thought you were going to say, what I, do I prefer the, the show Friends or Friends or Rom the band? Oh, that's a it's the different question. Yeah, well, it's yeah. a good band, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. So this Americans is- out there, go to Spotify, look up the band Friends or Rom. Yes. <laughs> You'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, Mahaley says, oh, what I'm curious, friends or Seinfeld people? Oh, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, let us uh, know. Phoebe is actually. Well, we want to know what kind of, what kind of crowd we got. This yeah, absolutely. Have we got a bunch of Joeys or have we got a bunch of Chandlers? Mm. <laughs> One of them is Seinfeld, I That's think. That's very true. Uh, Phoebe is actually a homeless drug addict looking in the window of Central Perk and imagining the life of five friends and the one she would share with them. This is another all the dream scenario. Yes. So she's been out there for a decade. Oh, they snuck it? one in. I didn't even notice. Yeah, sure I thought I'd cover yeah. the ball. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, well, I know because she has had life on the streets and you no know, troubles and she grew up an orphan and all of those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. I believe. Mm. So, yeah, that's where we're at with that. Mm. Mm. Are you into it or you've been to it? We should have done a rating system. It's too late now, isn't <laughs> it? Are you been to it? I'm, I'm, I think I'm been to it. Yeah, it's too sad also. <laughs> it's very sad, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one we've talked about before, but why not? 
uh, Jeweler says Tom Hardy Mad Max is Boomerang Kid Mad Max from Mad Max Two, yeah, right. the Dog Boy. Mm-hmm. So I, the, all the Mad Max movies appear to be set in different universes. Yes, like exactly. they're loosely connected, and mm-hmm. it's clearly supposed to be the same character. But George Miller is not really hung up on continuity or any no. of that, which I don't have a problem with because uh-huh. they all sort of stand on their own anyway. Would you like to see sequels to all the Mad Max movies? Mm. But just from that, their individual universes. So we get a Mad Max two, but it's the sequel to the original Mad Max that's just set in Dandenong or wherever it's set. <laughs> yeah. So no sand is what you're saying. No sand, no sand, no sand at all. Exactly. There's no water crisis. There's no nothing. Yeah. It's, it's just, just highway patrols. Cars. It's just him. It's just it's just him doing a highway patrol, and occasionally people ask him about that time that. <laughs> You know, he's, he, he, his family were run over. Yeah, and he handcuffed that dude to a car. That's right. And yes. was like, saw your leg off, mate. Yeah, and then the, and yeah, and that I guess Saw could also be the, in the same universe. Saw could be the sequel because Saw borrowed that idea. Oh, to, saw you, to saw your leg off. <laughs> it's true. That's why it's called Saw. It should have been called Saw Your Leg Off. <laughs> Getting a lot I of posters you, I'll out bet there. You won't. <laughs> I bet you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a lot of poster work this week. Oh, you know, it's just because he's, he's on the he's on the ground in Saw. He's just, yeah. He spends the whole movie on the ground pretending to be a dead body, and it's just a quick pan to him every. The director's cuts a quick pan to him every two minutes, going like, Psh, as if you would, you wouldn't, as if you're gonna. Oh, he did it. He did it. I didn't think he was gonna do it. He did it. I wish someone else was here, but I've killed everyone. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but so I I like that that Tom Hardy is is the, the boomerang boy because he would have, I know he's got like the same injury and he's got the family, but it's also. Yeah. Also, I would guess that uh, breaking your legs are fairly common injury. In oh, this universe. Huh, yeah. And he probably saw the Mad Max leg brace and went, I could do that. Same with the jacket and the gun. He's like, yeah, right. that dude was like the coolest fucking dude I've ever seen. He so that's my even, look. He probably doesn't even need the leg brace. He's probably just like, I'll make my own as a just, fashion statement. Yeah, and he just switches it every day. It's just, like uh, it's like glasses that don't have any lenses in them. <laughs> yeah, that's it's right, like, exactly. It's a fashion leg brace. <laughs> well, this he is, looks great. Uh, speaking of, I nearly went, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is from James Weir. This is also Mad Max. Uh, the Mad Max wasteland exists outside of Mega City 1 from Judge Dredd. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. So, yeah. so in, in, the, in the Judge dredd verse, and I'm not sure if we're talking about the movie or the, the comic book. Which movie? The Stallone yeah, one. The Stallone one. Yeah. But... Um, there's Mega City One, which is the super high tech, super huge, super mm. overpopulated city. And then if, but if you leave Mega City One, outside is the Cursed Earth, yes. which is just sort of a blasted atomic wasteland, which yep. is uh, pretty much the Mad Max. Universe. Yeah, that's not so. Wrong. Again, obviously, you could say like anything's out there. You could say yeah. Dune is out there. Oh. You could say anything out is anything's out you there. You could say out there is all a dream. <laughs> you could say that, and every, you? you could say that outside of Mega City One, there's a hospital, and everybody in the hospital's in a coma, having a dream. <laughs> but you're right. I'm, again, I, I, I'm only the sort of Mad Max Two and up could be out there. I feel again, just yeah, like it wouldn't be Mega yeah. City One, and then out outside of Mega City One is just Ballarat again, or whatever. It's Ballarat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's Kyneton. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. There's a local reference it's, for you. Um, Cooper Pedy? Yeah, Cooper Pedy would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laverton <laughs> near the right. airport. Bacchus Marsh. Bacchus Marsh. Yeah. yeah. So do you want my last one? Do you want to know what it is? Yes, please. From Cam says, John Wick is just a training program for Neo. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So that whole – because we don't really know how long the training programs take. In the yeah. video game path of Neo, which is fantastic, mm-hmm. he you go in and you do all the kung fu and you do the levels and stuff. Yeah, huh. So I guess it would make sense that in in real time – like in real time it's like seconds, but maybe he lives out this whole life of this guy whose wife dies and his dog dies and, and then <laughs> yeah. he goes on several what adventures. What does that teach him though? Can't just fighting, but it's, it's the motivation to get good at fighting because it's why you endeavor to. No, wait a minute, because yes. he already knows how to fight at the start of those movies. Yep. So is it just trauma? Is it trauma maybe training? It is. Yeah, maybe it's trauma training. <laughs> doesn't work at all. No, nope, it's bad. It's bad and weird. I, no, I like it. I still like it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that's that's all the fan theories we've got. Though I love these, though. We should do this more often. I think we should, yeah. Yeah, or at least once every hundred episodes. What happens? Yeah, exactly. What what happens is I've, we say, can you have some? Can we can we get some fan theories? And we get so many that we're like, oh no, we've made a mistake. Yeah. There's too many fan theories. Let's not think about this ever again. And and sometimes we're like, people haven't thought that through. Yeah. And then you look at it and you know, no, that's actually Ugh. that's actually brilliant. Well, we were going to do Rick and Morty fan theories, and I'm like, I don't want to be like, so pickle Rick is. <laughs> 
So the real Rick was a there's a dement, Morty went to the clone of Morty's mum was Rick was Rick's mum. No, Rick Rick is Morty's pickle, and he got his pickle sewed onto Morty's dick. So Morty's dick is a pickle. And <laughs> I would listen to that for an hour. I'll be honest with you. What I would you know what I would what we'd have to do would just get you talking, and then I put flashcards with with char- various characters on them and maybe yeah. keywords, yeah. and then you just have to integrate it into your theory. Uh, so yeah, that, but if you do have any fan theories, leave them below or if yes, you, have, uh, or wherever this is, wherever this goes up, this might be a video this week, I think. So that's cool, isn't yeah. it? And if it is a video, thanks for watching, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah.